Okay, welcome to the Sacred Site Oracle. And I am so excited to share some information about my recent travels to Egypt with you guys today. So I'm going to speak about Karnak Temple today. And it's taken me a little while to um, to basically produce these videos because I've been taking some time to process everything that happened in Egypt. And it was a massive trip and it feels like one of those... Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, just cocooning moments, right? Like you go there and like all these things come up and then you need some time to process it. And I, I kind of feel ready now to share some of the information that I got there and um, tell you guys a little bit more about like what happened when I was there. So today we're going to start with Karnak Temple. Okay, so Karnak Temple is the biggest religious building in the world it's like situated over 200 acres this building is in Luxor so if you look on the map um Cairo is in the north if you go south Luxor is there uh and it's a it's a beautiful city town like but it's quite big um and there's two main temples so you've got the Karnak temple and the Luxor temple we'll go a little bit about into how those two link up um but basically this temple complex was built over the space of 2000 years okay so you're talking about the the time frame that was um was like most prevalent here was 2500 bc and then over 2000 years um about it was something about like more than 30 pharaohs went through that time span so everyone kind of like tacked their little bit on because they wanted to have a piece of this beautiful place right so if you have a look at this picture here then it will give you an idea of how immense this temple is. And there's so many sub temples here as well. And the most famous part of it is obviously like the entrance when you come in and then you have the hypo style as well. So we're going to speak a little bit more about that now. So this temple was known as Ipet Isu. Okay, so it means most select of places. Um, and it, it's a city temple because it is so massive and it's dedicated to the god Amun. So he's the ram headed god. So if you have a look here at the video, you can see as you enter into this massive complex, all of these beautiful like ram headed gods like to the side here as you walk in. So he's Amun is the ram headed god. His wife was Mut. So she was a lion headed goddess. Um, so I'm just going to share a picture here of her so that you can see what she looks like. And then their son was the god Konzu. Okay, so he was the moon god. So these three gods were the main feature of this temple. Um, and so a lot of the festivals were around them about, you know, um, paying homage to Amun uh, and really working with those energies there. So now the main reason that this temple was there uh, was for this huge festival. Okay, so at the end of the harvest um, season, the, the festival was called the Opet Festival, um, and this lasted for 27 days. So basically what happened was that they believed that during this time they would bring offerings to the gods and to earth because it would be a process of regeneration of the earth and of the energies of the earth um, after this massive um, uh, growth period right so if you can imagine during summer and spring the earth would have been providing the food for the people etc and then once they've done the harvest they would then have this festival to basically say thank you to the earth and what they then also did was they utilized the energy of the stars to help with the regeneration of the earth now, one of the things that really struck me, and I, I only basically read up or found out about this after I came back, but was that the obelisks were very, very prominent uh, in this in this complex, right? And as I was stood there looking at the 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 big, um, they had like a diorama basically of of this whole complex, and I could see how strategically these obelisks were placed. And all of a sudden it just this download happened and I could see the star energy coming into the obelisks and basically infusing the earth with energy. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. What's this all about? And I could see how they were strategically placed. So like the, the energy would come down and obelisks are known um, as receivers, right? So when you see an obelisk somewhere, 
they usually connect it to the cosmos and it's about bringing cosmic energy down so i could see this energy going into the earth and then i read up about like how they used like regenerative star energy to nourish the earth back again and to say thank you to her for having you know this massive output of energy to produce their food so i thought this was absolutely beautiful and these temples were literally um like cocooning spaces right that that held this energy and infused everything back and i loved how they used this to say thank you to the earth okay so then they had this like massive festival and what happened was Karnak temples over here and then 2.4 kilometers away from it is Luxor temple and there's this beautiful avenue of um, sphinxes it's called the avenue of sphinxes and you have these sphinxes that's on both sides of this avenue and then they would have their festival and their celebration walking through from the one temple to the other temple and then bringing the offerings with them and all of that to say thank you to the gods and thank you to the earth for everything that she did for them um, and this is a beautiful they've actually started restoring this avenue so if you are there make sure that you have a look because it's it's gorgeous and it's just amazing how it all connects together as well so this whole process of saying thank you was obviously one of the main um events in this temple but day-to-day -day life uh aspects of karnak temple is also what's really really famous is the hyperstyle hall okay so if you have a look here at this video there is 134 columns in this room okay so this is the largest room of any religious building in the world and it was very interesting because our guide showed us how through the roof this um, the light of the sun would come and then it would literally shine on the different pillars at different times of the day at different times of the year and then you would have your priests who who literally read the room right so they would be checking it out and go oh okay equinox is on its way or it's this time of day so this was like a big like a big clock room basically it would it would indicate time for the priests and then based on this they could then let the people know about like oh we're working with these energies we're now going to be doing this festival we're going to be doing that so this was a really important room and um and it was interesting because the last time i visited in 2017 the um these beautiful columns weren't as prominently colorful as they are now so the guys who work here in the temple the archaeologists and stuff they've literally been cleaning and literally like taking water and scrubbing off these pillars and the colors are coming back so if you just look here on the video you'll see how the colors of the paintings that's on here um has been basically brought back to life so if you could just imagine what it would have been like if you had 134 of these pillars in like pristine coloring it would have been an incredible sight to walk into this room and see all of these beautiful messages carved out on a, on these huge huge pillars that you see over here and there were also a whole bunch of pharaohs who had to put their finger in the pie here, add on something here, add on something there. So this room was literally like everyone had to have their two cents worth. Some of the pictures were scrubbed out, so some new pictures were added on over it. So it's been a mixture of various different pharaohs that literally needed to put their mark down to say, OK, I'm raining now. Let me put some stuff about me on here okay so this is seriously just one of my favorite places it is so magical and when you walk in there you just feel completely dwarfed by the enormity of these these amazing pillars with their beautiful colors now this section where we're walking in now is basically the first part of the temple as you walk in now this would have been the space where the normal people like you and me who weren't priestesses or priests um, would be able to go and they could celebrate in this space, they could speak to the priest, they could bring their offerings, they could ask the gods questions, etc. And this huge space would have been where the normal guy in the street could literally come and celebrate, ask questions, do his thing. Okay, so it would have been a really beautiful space. Again, it would have been um, decorated with very vibrant colors and it the feel would have been amazing right and, then, and just as you actually walk in as well it does feel really 
like sacred the energy there is beautiful so then as you walk further in then you get to the hyperstyle and then you will get to the holy of holies etc so the other parts of the temples and there were various temples here where the priests and priestesses would have done their thing and actually have been like working with different energies for different gods so there's different um spaces dedicated there would have also been if you look here on the map again you would have seen where the the sacred um where the sacred waters were where they would have had their rituals etc but that was more this the the latter the back space of this temple was more where the the holy people the priests priestesses would have worked and done their magic and had their rituals etc okay so then we basically walked through the entire temple complex we checked everything out there were little temples which was really beautiful to see um some amazing obelisks as well um and then we went right to the back of the complex okay and this is a place where i haven't been before uh and it was another little temple um and this was really interesting it had this incredible as you can see on this photo here um it had a portal doorway okay so these things are really interesting because I've worked a lot with these in my activations and stuff where they are literally doorways into different realms. So as you can see here around my photo, you will see that there's seven doors inside of this doorway. And if you think about like the stories of um, like ancient goddesses like Inanna, and if you think about like any like spiritual stories okay ancient spiritual stories there's always like the seven layers that we have to go through the seven doorways that we have to go to like to get to the deeper realms okay so it was really interesting for me because we had an opportunity to actually connect with the portal and spend some time in it as you can see and when i placed my third eye on the portal um it was literally like you could see yourself going into the doorway so it was like woof, 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 woof. you like literally moved in and they could see how this would transport you into a space of like connecting with different energies connecting with information connecting with wisdom etc so the process of those seven doors is literally aspects of yourself that you get to see again so they they would have believed that like you go through door one, you go through, through door two. So wherever you were in your spiritual journey, you would literally be able to see aspects of yourself and go deeper and deeper within yourself. Okay. And they would have used these to travel into these spaces. So it's quite a, <laughs> it's quite an interesting process. And it's a very trippy process for me to, to like work with that because it is like, it's, it's like for want of a better word it feels like interdimensional travel you literally move through the dimensions so i'd never been to this space and it just felt incredible it was also really beautiful they had like um uh, uh hieroglyphics of the tree of life just around in, in another room in this little complex that we were in um and that was really incredible as well and one of the things that stood out for me is the there was one of the gods that i wasn't familiar with called Suka. Now it's um, an eagle headed God. And our first thought is usually when I see an eagle headed God, you think of Horus, right? The son of um, uh, Osiris and Isis. But Suka is a much older God and also looks older. So that like literally, if you look at the pictures um, of this, this uh, eagle headed God. Um, so Suka is the God of the underworld. Okay. And these portals take us into the underworld. Okay, these portals are literally like gateways into the underworld, gateways into the parts of us that we haven't looked at, pieces of us that we're needing to find. Okay, so Suka was literally the keeper of this little temple and the guide for this little temple. So it was really, really beautiful. Okay, so after that trippy experience, we made our way to um, the temple where the statue of Sekhmet is. Now, this place for me is just incredible um it's called the temple of Ptah. so Ptah is the husband of Sekhmet so Ptah is the creator god he's one of the most ancient gods um one of the the first gods and Sekhmet was the wife of Ptah. and um 
This is a very small little temple. So there's three rooms. Um, you walk into the middle room and then there's a, a room to the left and a room to the right. So the room to the right is where you have the statue of Sekhmet, um, still fully preserved. This is like a, what's a four, a four and a half thousand year old statue that's still there and still, you yeah, still preserved. So that was really magical. But first, what we did as a group was we spent time in the middle. Um, so we were waiting in the middle section of the temple and everyone got their private time with Sekhmet. And what struck me as I was sat there, because obviously you're always a little bit nervous because you don't know what's going to happen when you go in and what's going to come up. But what struck me was that there was a statue of Sekhmet seated, right? But this statue had no head. And as I was sat there on the floor, meditating and then looking up because there was this little sliver of light that just hit the statue as I was sat there and it was like something inside me went just look and as I looked I became really sad because her head was chopped off okay it was a headless statue but you could see it was her body and you knew it was her but it just made me think of the voices that's been lost okay the disconnection of our like our ability to speak to our bodies okay and it just made me realize again as i sat there the importance of us reclaiming our voices and part of my personal journey with segment up to this point has always been about the reclamation of my own voice the ability to speak my truth out in this world and it was just so like heart-wrenching looking at how you know they would have taken her head off to make her not speak her truth Okay, so that sat really deeply within me. So I'm going to tell you guys now a little bit about like my journey with Sekhmet so far, just to put this, this next little bit into context. So I went to Egypt in 2017 for the first time with Michelle and the, the, the Awaken the Goddess um, tour that I was on again this time. And I didn't really have any expectations when I went the first time. I was just like, woohoo, I'm going to Egypt. This is amazing, right? And um, I was very excited about it. And on our very first meditation during our opening circle that we had, as I closed my eyes, we were meditating, setting our intentions, all of that. Um, I had this like vision of this like lion face right in front of me. And I was a bit like, mm, okay, what's this all about? Um, because I, I mean, I didn't know anything about the gods or <laughs> any of it, right? Like literally I was just like, cool, I'm just going to this like amazing place with some spiritual people. Um, and the next day, so I thought nothing of it. I'm just like, okay, I'm sure there's a reason I'll figure out what this is about. So the next day we went to one of our very first temples. And as we walked into this temple, all I could see were these statues of this female body with a lion head on it and like everywhere it was there and I'm like okay who's this then so they told me it was Sekhmet okay so Sekhmet is the lion headed goddess lion headed goddess and she is the goddess of like fire and chaos and regeneration and rebirth and stuff but she's got like a really um like your fiery hectic energy right like it's literally if you want shit done you just go to segment you tune into that energy and it's like woof. um and i thought oh okay this is gonna be fun so obviously like just decided to let's see where this goes so the very first time we went to this special little temple and i walked into this room and it was like my whole world just stopped i saw this the statue and I just broke down and it was this really intense experience at that point in time I was still going through the process of like finding my voice finding who I am stepping back into my light working through all of the fears like if you're a spiritual entrepreneur or you're in this world as well you like you know what it's like you know about the pain and the the hecticness of being seen okay of like coming out and going this is my truth this is who i am and that was the beginning for me that was literally like a rite of passage that day with her where she was like okay are you gonna step back into your light are you gonna allow yourself to be seen again because this is your chance this is your chance to literally commit and devote yourself to being seen again and stepping back into your light and it was so interesting because 
I had had that healing experience in that room with her. And when I left the room, I went to the little room that was like on the on the other side and there's nothing in it. It's just an empty room, but there is a little window of light. And I remember standing there and meditating and she said to me, just take one step forward. And my eyes were closed. And I remember just taking a physical step forward and the light from that little window literally hit my face and lit me up. And I was like, okay, this is it. This is a huge sign for me. I'm ready to step back into my light. And since 2017, I've done like all of this work. I've done like this, you know, like mission to basically find my voice. And I'm quite proud of what's happened so far. And it's been an amazing experience. So then when I got the call again to go back to Egypt now in 2023, I'm like, really what's left for me to find here you know like um uh but there was a lot left believe me <laughs> because as you know this is like an onion journey right we're just peeling more and more of ourselves back as we proceed um and so i got into the temple now the next time and i had my i was i was the very last person out of the whole group who got to to basically spend time with segment and as I stepped into the room, I just, it just hit me, right? I was like, woof, tears flowing, all of that. And I, I dropped to my knees and I just put my hands on her and I just thanked her for basically giving me the courage to step back into my light. But as I was doing this and really emotional and really just like in that space of saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got this like message, like I heard in my head, it's like literally, and this is a bit crude, but like, get the fuck up, <laughs> stand up. And it was like, obviously a new Lundy voice, but I was like, okay. And I remember like, I, I rose up and it was like, look me in the eyes, look me in the eyes and stand up, stand up tall, stand up straight. You have nothing to bow down for. Okay, so it was just this moment of recognition within within this like room of like where where am I now and can I start seeing that what I have done and how far I've come and that I can be proud of what I've done and that I am actually in this space where like I can reclaim all of what I've done and put it in myself and just like take this moment to just appreciate what you've done, how far you've come and what you have created. Okay. And like that remembering of that inner strength that it's not, it's not her that did this work. It's not her that did any of the stuff that I did to get to this point that I am in my journey and my business and my life, but it was me who did it. And it was literally like, look at me and give yourself some credit for what you have done. Okay. So that was like huge for me. And it was such a, such an overwhelming moment of just remembering that this was my creation, my journey. And even though I've had the support of the guides, it's important to remember. And like, while you're watching this also, just take a moment, like, where are you? Like, how far have you come? What is the shit that you've waded through over the last five years to get to this point, right? And that was literally what it was for me. It's just like, look what you've done. This is fucking epic, right? So yeah, so it was a beautiful experience with her and just absolutely heart opening for me. Now, the thing that's really interesting about Sekhmet and like being in this temple was the day after we all had like a little powwow on, on, um, on our boat. We spoke about like what came up for us, what did people experience? And it was so interesting to see how she literally, she works with us with what we need at that point in time. And obviously my work with Segment has always been about like finding my true power, um, stepping back into my truth, shining my light, owning who I am, all of that. But the way that she showed up for people in different ways, for different aspects of their lives, and especially like embracing mother energy, ancestral healing, all that type of stuff, like um, just so much healing as well, because my first encounter with her back in 2017 was a massive healing experience. And it just depends on what you need. And somehow this goddess and her essence shows up for everyone in that space of what they need exactly at that moment. So if you do decide to go and explore Sekhmet, 
Um, I've done a, a beautiful um, meditation for you as well, which I've recorded journeying with her. And the thing is with her, it's just like she will give you what you need. She will show up for you exactly as you need to see her at that point in time. Okay, so that's the beauty of Segment. So yeah, I've got so much time for that goddess and working with her energy and just do it, do it, whatever you do. Okay, so that's basically Karnak Temple. It is such an incredible place. <laughs> if you can go there, go there. It's just, it's magic. And I've had amazing experiences there, even in 2017. The stuff that I've seen um, <laughs> has been incredible. And it's just, it's it's a beautiful place. It holds amazing energy um, and the sacred water that is under that temple the energy that is under that temple the regeneration aspect of honoring of mother earth saying thank you to her just how the ancients held the earth in so much esteem that they had built this complex to say thank you to her for providing for them Okay, for keeping them alive, for sustaining them, for nourishing them. So the energy of this place is one of like gratitude. The energy of this place is one of connection to the earth. The energy of this place is like literally like this place honors Mother Gaia. Okay, so when you go there and you walk through there, just tune into how connected the ancients were to the land and how much love and how much energy and how they literally all of their practices was to honor her. All of their practices was to say, thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you for helping us to survive another year again. Okay. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, make sure that you check out the meditation. It was pretty epic when I recorded it. So I'm sure you will enjoy it. And um, yeah, just tune into the energies and take some time today to also thank mother Gaia for everything that she does for you every day and for keeping you alive and I do hope you enjoyed it so if you did please like subscribe do all the things share with your friends and thank you so much for your support